Hi, welcome to the eCam channel. This is John. Today we are going to briefly introduce reference electrodes, including their fundamentals, selection, and maintenance. Reference electrodes are one of the most important tools for electrochemists, as the knowledge of electrical potential is essential for designing electrochemical devices or performing meaningful measurements. In a three electrode cell, the working electrode is the electrode of interest. The counter electrode holds the charge flow from the working electrode and the reference electrode assesses the potential of the working electrode. To qualify as a reference electrode, it should possess a reproducible potential that is constant in time. Ideally, it should be easy to prepare as well. There are several intrinsic sources of errors associated with the reference electrode. Ideally, the reference electrode is non-polarizable. However, in reality, a small passage of current will cause an irreversible reaction at the reference electrode and move the potential away from equilibrium. The second source of error could be the liquid junction across the salt bridge between the reference electrode filling solution and the electrolyte. It is usually negligible, but the error will increase in dilute solutions. Lastly, impurities can change the electrode activity, react with the electrolyte, or react with the electrode, changing the equilibrium potential. To test whether a reference electrode is suitable for your electrochemical systems, we can insert two reference electrodes of the same kind to your electrolyte. Connect one of them as the reference electrode and connect the other as the working electrode. If the open circuit potential is negligible, meaning that the potential is in the microvolt range, the reference electrode is reproducible. Similarly, repeating the experiment with a reference electrode candidate and an established reference electrode and performing a long open circuit potential measurement will tell us whether the reference electrode candidate is stable over time. One of the most encountered early questions for reference electrodes is how to convert the potential versus one electrode to the potential versus another. For such a conversion, we can use the equation below, where E prime is the potential against reference electrode 2, E is the potential against reference electrode 1, and the ERE1 and ERE2 are the potentials of the reference electrode against another common reference electrode like the normal hydrogen electrode NHE in the example here. It is easier to understand the conversion with an example. Let's convert negative 0.1 volt versus silver silver chloride in saturated potassium chloride to the potential versus mercury mercury sulfate in saturated potassium sulfate. We can apply the equation above to this specific case and plug in the numbers. For the reference electrode potentials, we can obtain the values from the chart on the right. Silver silver chloride in saturated potassium chloride is 0.197 versus NHE, and mercury mercury sulfate in saturated potassium sulfate is 0.64 volt versus NHE. The resulted potential from the operation is negative 0.543 volt. Let's check whether this result makes sense. So this is negative 0.1 volt versus silver silver chloride, and these are 0 volts versus silver silver chloride and mercury mercury sulfate. The difference between the zero volts of the two reference electrodes is about 0.44 volts. The question asks for negative 0.1 volt versus silver silver chloride, so the difference between this potential and zero volt versus mercury mercury sulfate should be about 0.54 volts. It agrees with the result obtained from the equation. For the conversion of other electrode potentials, we can look up on the internet with keywords like standard electrode potential, potentials of reference electrodes, or look through the literature. Another frequent concern for reference electrodes is to select a proper one for your electrochemical system. We will provide some common reference electrode options later, but in general, consider the following things when selecting reference electrodes. First, review the literature on your electrochemical system and look for the reference electrodes adopted by the recent similar studies. The frequently used ones are usually safe for your systems, but we also need to consider whether the crosstalk of the filling solution and the electrolyte will interfere with our experiments. For example, the chlorine ions in the silver silver chloride electrode could diffuse to the working electrode and interfere with oxygen reduction reactions on platinum. Also, in non aqueous electrolytes, dimethylformamide will react with silver ions, and we cannot use silver references at the presence of this solvent. Lastly, after you purchase or fabricate reference electrodes, please check if their potentials are reproducible and stable in your system. If you checked all the boxes, well-maintained reference electrodes should be reliable in your systems over a long time. Next, we are going to provide examples of common reference electrodes in three electrode systems. In aqueous electrolytes, the most generic reference electrode might be the reversible hydrogen electrode. 
researchers know well how its potential varies as a function of pH against the standard hydrogen electrode, and therefore it is a good electrode to refer to in aqueous electrolytes. In other cases, mercury-mercury oxide is a good reference in basic electrolytes. Saturated calomel electrode and silver-silver chloride are the most common reference electrodes in neutral and acidic electrolytes. When sulfuric acid is used, mercury-mercury sulfate is a good reference electrode. In non-aqueous electrolytes, we don't have a general standard reaction like the oxidation of molecular hydrogen. A common standard reaction is ferrocene ferricenium ion. In systems where a pseudo-reference or quasi-reference electrode like silver wire is used because we don't know their exact potential, the potential of pseudo-reference should be calibrated against ferrocene ferricenium ion before reporting the values. In energy storage research, alkali metals like lithium and sodium are frequently used as reference electrodes. Other common reference electrodes include silver-silver nitrate in acetonitrile like the one shown in the right figure. And as we mentioned earlier, that silver ions could react with some solvents, so in those systems, a different reference electrode is used, like the lithium amalgam lithium chloride in DMSO. In two electrode systems, the counter electrode may also serve the role of the reference electrode. However, if we want to obtain more accurate results, the counter electrode should have a much greater surface area. From butler volmers equation, this results in smaller current density and therefore smaller potential changes of the counter electrode during biasing. To properly store the reference electrodes, we should rinse the electrodes with a proper solvent after use and never let the fluid dry out. Usually for aqueous electrolytes, the solvent will be water. For non-aqueous electrolytes, the solvent will be something clean and can mix with your electrolyte. After the rinse, insert the reference electrode into the storage container and make sure the fluid is in contact with the white sponge. After that, store the reference electrode upright and don't store it in areas exposed to direct sunlight. The last topic we would like to cover is dealing with malfunctioning reference electrodes. Usually when an electrode malfunctions, it may lead to easy potential overload. You can inspect the reference electrode visually to see whether it has a color change or crystal growth near the fruit. In this figure on the right, you can see a big salt crystal grow on top of the fruit, blocking it completely. If the electrode looks normal, you may also check the impedance. If the impedance is greater than 1000 ohms, there might be salt crystals clogging the fruit. If clogs happen, we can dissolve them by replacing the filling solution with DI water and immerse the reference electrode in DI water. To replace the filling solution, we have to slide the access door and remove and add solutions using a micro pipette. Use plastic pipettes to avoid breaking parts inside the electrode. After the crystal dissolves, replace DI water with appropriate filling solutions. If we have a chemical that contaminates our reference electrode, we will need to identify the chemical and find a solvent that can dissolve it. As long as the solvent is not a base stronger than 1 molar potassium hydroxide, we can replace the filling solution with DI water and immerse the fluid in the solution that dissolves the contaminating chemical. We do not recommend strong bases because they will dissolve the fluid. It is always a good idea to consult the manufacturer of your reference electrode before taking action. I hope this video helps you learn something about reference electrodes. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. The main references in this video are listed here and in the description section. The videos in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.